Well, hi, and welcome to my shop today. Lucky for me, uh, one of you sent me the proper uh, schematic for this radio. Uh, fantastic. So I think I'm going to spend some time going over the schematic, kind of run through it as best I can, and identify what's going on in it, and think about what it is that could be causing low output aside from the uh, this particular tube, the uh, 12, 12 CR6 I think it is. Uh, looks like this tube is weak. It's probably the cause of the low audio, but maybe not. Uh, it could be other problems in the radio and the signal may be um, uh, interfered with or low because of other problems. So I best not just bank on this being the cause because the fact is I don't have a replacement for this guy anyway. I'm stuck with him. Stuck with him for now. There's no substitute that I could find or anything for this tube. So uh, let's look at the schematic and see if we can identify a few uh, possible causes of low output aside from that, that, uh, that, that tube. Okay, so 1957 is when this radio was made. It's, it's a lot uh, younger than I thought. I, I kind of guessed it was 1949, 1950, a bad guess. So here's the schematic for it. it it's a one-pager. This is coming out of Beatman's one-pager. They have a nice diagram down here uh, pointing out all the things you need to have pointed out. So we run through the schematic here, and I'll just, I'll just follow the signal through. So we'll start way out here. So this is the loop antenna that's mounted on the back of the, uh, of the uh, back of the radio. It's just, it's just a loop of wire. And as I noted before, it's hooked directly to the tuning capacitor. So this radio will not work properly without the proper back on it. So if you find one of these radios and the back is missing, the antenna's gone too. You'll have to figure out what to do about this. Now this is resonating against the tuning capacitor. So, so this is actually a critical component, that uh, coil on the back of the, of the radio. So uh, if we look down here, um, things start getting a little different from what I looked at before. So this symbol, what does it mean? Ah, okay, so this symbol, okay, that clears it up. This symbol means the B minus. It doesn't mean to the chassis. Where, where, there was a, there it is, there it is. Okay, so there's the single connection I spotted before to the chassis. Is it the only connection? If we look for another one of these symbols anywhere in here, anywhere, sometimes near the front of the radio, front end of the radio, some things may be chassis grounded. No. Okay, so I think that says there's one connection through this big capacitor, as I found it, to the chassis, and everything else here, this is tying to the negative bus, which we know is made up of various pieces of wire, snakes around through the back of the radio, not really obvious, just which wire is a negative. Notice here that we do this. So, so it comes in on the plug. One wire heads basically on through all the heaters. That's tapped off for the rectifier and then you have the rectify power here, DC power. We have the most rectified, most filtered rather, most filtered power tied to this line, which is the B plus driving all the plates on the tube here. So highly filtered right out at the end here. Three capacitors and a couple of resistors. Less filtered is this part here, which is heading for the output transformer. Uh, the, the little bit of uh, hum that might be in this line is not, not audible. If everything's working right, we can't hear it. You don't need to filter it all the way out to this degree, but if you send any hum on this line, it's going to get amplified, and you're going to hear it. That's why this one needs to be so smoothly filtered. Uh, tubes in series. Oh, and uh, of course, here's the rectifier one up here. <coughs> I was going to say, hey, they left the tube out. Uh, shows you the voltage drop along the way. That's, that's interesting information. If one of these tube heaters is defective, uh, a heater can develop a short in it and actually uh, draw maybe different current 
and that um, these tubes all need to operate on the same current. They're all going to get the same current. Ideally, it's point. It's 150 milliamps through all these tubes. But if any one of them is a little out of whack in terms of the heater, it may take more or less. That would cause that tube to misoperate. If you remember when I fired up this uh, radio with the new, the new old 12BA6, that 12BA6 glowed like a light bulb. Um, what do we got here? What's that? This is 12. Am I, am I reading that wrong? Let me just zoom in on that. There's something funny here. The list of tube names, tube numbers. Th this can't be right. Oh, there it looks okay now. Isn't that interesting? Oh, I think I was looking at this. Yeah, I was good. Yeah, never, never mind. Ignore me. Ignore, ignore me. It's just my own head going wild. These are essentially live videos. Um, I don't exactly write a script. <laughs> I usually think of the first sentence I'm going to say, and then I turn on the camera. Uh, so let's continue following the signal here. Let's get back to all this. Uh, yeah, let's let's follow the signal. So it comes into this first RF amplifier. This is the tube I replaced. I was so weak. Uh, so we, there is a cathode resistor here and a grid through this coil is hooked up to the now this is the ABC line we'll talk about that later when we get to it there's a DC voltage on here that needs to make it all the way to the grid it has to go through the antenna which is why if you operate this radio without the antenna connected this grid is not going to be handled properly uh, grid depth biasing Onward. So the output of this is fed into this coil, which is tuned. There's a capacitor there. Comes out on the secondary, and fed into the 12B6, which is the mixer tube or frequency changer tube. This is this is tuned by this capacitor. Down here is a local oscillator. Oscillator coils. And the oscillator works by working through an amplifier. So here this little tickler coil. Kind of interesting how they've done that. Uh, comes up, hooks up to the grid. You can imagine how high the impedance is on this. Of course, they've got 22K right there. Kind of pulling it down. But So that's the oscillator fed to grid 1. And the signal itself is fed on grid. I think that's grid 3 right there. So different radios do it differently, which grid they use for what. So that's good to know. We already knew that from fooling around earlier. After going through the frequency changer, out it comes. Um, I've commented on what's on this wire uh, in some of my past videos, and um, not quite true what I've been saying. So I think I was thinking on this wire right here should be a combination of just about everything that can come out of this tube. But in fact, anything that comes out of this tube that is not 455 is going to look at this circuit kind of like a short circuit and it's going to be uh, consumed or rubbed out or snuffed out if you like or just won't won't lift up out of the noise such as 455 will when it meets up with this high impedance tuned coil here so on this line all you'd really expect to find is 455 kilohertz Okay, groceries put away. Now, let's continue here. Um, you know, it's just coming out of this transformer. Uh, so this is an RF transformer. It's a little different from these two guys. These guys are stuck at 455, but this guy... It's very interesting. Um, he has to pass a range of frequencies through here. So you couldn't imagine the Q of this is all that high. You wouldn't want it to be all that high. Same thing with the antenna out here. Antenna and its capacitor. No, that's not true. No, no. This could be sharp. You know what? This doesn't have to be so sharp because it's tuned here against here. Yeah. So what's adjustable? So the secondary of this is adjustable. Hmm. 
I've got this adjustment. Look, I've also got this. Yeah, this isn't. Uh, don't think this one's variable here. We'll have to keep an eye open for that because sometimes when they put an arrow on the end of the symbol, it means it's variable. Like like these ones, they don't have an arrow. So, so, so it would be a trimmer for here. That makes sense. There has to be a trimmer for this one to, to tune it up. So I guess that's what this is. This is the trimmer for the capacitor, but at the same time, you can also change the inductance. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll watch for the instructions. Oh, there's no instructions. There's no uh, alignment instructions I've found, or anyone's found, uh, for this radio at this point. Uh, huh. Okay, we'll have to think our way through that when the time comes. From here on in, things are pretty standard, though. So, oscillator frequency, local oscillator frequency mixed in, out comes the IF at 455, or whatever it is, 460, 455 comes into the IF uh, amplifier tube. This is where most of the oomph comes in the radio and most of its uh, amplification, if you like, usually is in this tube. A much stronger signal comes out into this transformer. Uh, so from here, the output goes into the detector tube, really driven onto that little plate there, that little diode plate. So it gets rectified and start building up a DC voltage in this wire here. Looks like these little capacitors up here, they're inside the can, they're not even outside. Looks like they're probably RF snuffers. They're trying to get rid of any RF that's left. They're trying to just be left with the audio uh, that's contained in the, in the signal. But after rectifying it, you can get that audio. Let's put it that way. Um, this must be the we call the diode load resistor here, 47K. Come into this uh, phono plug on the back, it's quite clear how they've drawn it here, how it works as a switch. So as you push in the plug, you open these two little contacts here and replace the input with what's on the end of the plug shaft, which is the phono input, it would then be connected down here. But without anything plugged in, this switch is closed. So the radio signal is coming out and heading towards the volume control. Top of the volume control, bottom's on B minus. It's a 500K, this is a 47K resistor. So the bulk of the output shows up across here, of course, where you want it. And we have the slider to select how much you want to send on its way, a capacitor to block the DC that built up in the rectifier here, and block it from going in further. Kind of funny because it's going to show up on the other side of the capacitor anyway through a unusual circuit here in this radio. Uh, but the radio the radio is uh, advertised as being a volumatic. It's also a registered trademark. Volumatic. Now all these radios have an automatic volume control, an ADC if you like. This one's got two. And one of them is done in the audio here, uh, which is a little unusual, but we'll look at that in just a moment. So that DC voltage that's built up here is on this wire. Now you meet up with this huge resistor here. You'd think, well, nothing will be left on the other side. But on the other side, all there are are basically open grids. Basically, uh, blah, blah. what? Oh, oh, I slipped, I slipped. Oops, whoop, what? No, I didn't, I didn't slip. What? Okay, not sure what's going on here. Okay, not, not to worry about it though. But if you follow the wire up here, through the coil, and out to the grid, and same thing here, up here through the antenna and to the grid. So AVC is running on this line, and the impedance is super high because it actually goes nowhere. And it just goes to grids and, and dies out. So even though you got a huge resistor here, the voltage on this side should be pretty similar to the voltage on that side. There's no current flowing through it. If you didn't have this huge resistor here, then the high impedance you're looking for on this line and all the grids would disappear because you'd be hooking up the grids to this low impedance at the spot here, relatively low impedance. So this, this helps maintain the very high impedance out here. 
So the DC voltage is fed back this grid, this grid, this grid, all three of them uh, are being, uh, the grid bias is going more negative with a stronger signal causing the amplification factor to go down in each of these tubes. So each of these tubes are calmed down a little bit when a strong signal comes in. And pretty much all radios do that. And this one goes one step further because it takes that same voltage that's on this wire here, the ABC voltage, and fires it through another huge resistor onto the grid of the audio tube, which is very unusual. Uh, typically these tubes are triodes with a couple diodes or one diode in them. A handy tube for a radio, uh, radio uh, designer because it, it covers two functions that have to occur in these radios. And one is the detection on the diode and the other one is the preamp for your output tube. We combine them in one tube envelope here. But this is different. This isn't a triode. This has got a pentode in it. So uh, I could be wrong about this, but I think a pentode leads to this tube effect, um, which is commonly referred to as remote cutoff, or uh, um, a, a, along with this beneficial operating capability is the fact that it, it has a remote cutoff. It means you, it's pretty hard to drive this tube in the cutoff. That's what it really means. So uh, that, I believe, comes along with this variation in gain when you vary, oops, when you vary the bias on it. Well, it's got a number written right there. 0.95 volts. So maybe it's point, did, did they do that with the other grids? Something, that's, that says 92 volts, I think is what that says. That's not the kind of grid I'm interested in. So nowhere else are they writing the grid voltage. Oh, maybe here. Ah, looks like they have right here. What's this little note? Oh, oh, everybody look away, look away. Okay. Yeah, there was a shot behind the curtain. Uh... can't read it. Looks like a, a voltage something at a certain frequency. So, don't know. I mean, this is the grid that's associated with the uh, converter here. It's not quite the grid. This this would be the one here that might have a voltage. What's that say? It looks like a voltage written there. You know, there might be something that says green. I think that says green there. Looks like, looks like 92 volts. I don't think there's 92 volts sitting there. I don't know what that is. What about this grid? Nothing written on it. So this is quite clear though. Here's another grid with a voltage on it. 0.5. 0.5 volts. Okay, interesting thing. That's why I'm going through the schematic here like this, is to pick up on all these little, little tiny things here. So getting back to the ABC, we're almost done. ABC brought around, whoops, and fed up to this tube causing the amplification factor to vary in this tube. I guess one could suggest that if you're not getting the proper ABC voltage out of the diode here, that these tubes would be, they'd be all amplifying high, like, like their gain would be high if you can't develop the negative voltage. And no, no, no um, ABC negative grid voltage and everything runs uh, at maximum amplification so hmm. so I don't know um, because it seems to me I saw very little ABC voltage well, that could be because maybe maybe the this capacitor is leaky now, this is a high impedance circuit it wouldn't take much charge leakage through a leaky capacitor to drain it same thing over here a little bit of a leak on this guy would drain out the ABC voltage in this high impedance line. So we would be suspicious of these. I think there's, they're, uh, they're pretty good looking capacitors uh, in the radio. I'm, I'm doubtful that there would be a problem there, but doubtful doesn't mean much. 
Okay, so we come out of this uh, uh, amplifier now, uh, audio only, and uh, on the plate here, what's that say? It looks like it says 28 volts. I can't imagine that's 28 volts on the plate there. That doesn't make much sense. That's heading, heading for the output tube. The screen here. So the screen is getting it. So the B plus is coming up this line, going through 100k to get to the plate, going through 470, a half million ohms to get to the screen. And they they quiet the screen with this capacitor here. So if this capacitor is not working, I think the screen will um, may. May, uh, may work against the amplification of the tube. I'm not sure. Like, in other words, the output would, would drop lower if this is not doing its job. And then 100 pico, 100 pico. There's the tone control. So that's the tone control is a treble cut. Some of the higher frequencies can make it through this capacitor. This resistor, a 1 million ohm resistor, it's almost an open wire in a sense. So not going to affect, not, nothing's going to go through here, but look, the tone control shorts out this line to, to the uh, to the B minus. So if you turn this control all the way up here, you then zap out all the trouble off this line and you muffle, muffle the output. Okay, there's a big uh, important blocking capacitor here, keeping the B plus from getting to the grid on the on this output tube. There's a 150 ohm resistor here. Gives the voltage 4.9 volts, so we can check this. Very important to check. Uh, this goes up here. There is 0.01 here to here. Don't know what that capacitor is doing exactly. A uh, common thing is to bypass this kind of resistor with a capacitor would be would be down this way to the B minus. So not exactly sure what this would do. Probably a similar sort of thing. Not sure though. 470 it looks like a self-biasing grid here. Um, that's what I would guess. Oh, no, no, what am I saying? You know, it biases here, biases from here. Output goes through the output transformer, nothing spectacular there. We already looked at the power supply. So here's the light, uh, light bulb. Now, this, this radio doesn't have a convenient source of 6 volts to drive a light bulb. Now, this is a problem in all these non-transformer or, or power transformerless radios, or 5-tube radios as they're commonly called, although this one has 6. So really, it's a radio that puts all the tubes and heaters in series and then drops the entire line voltage across them. But this one's got something unusual going on. It has a tap in the middle of the filament here. So this might be dropping, does it say? Like that, that could be the number right there. You can't read it. So, but this, this filament is dropping a, a certain amount of volts across it. In the middle, if this filament were perfectly balanced or equal, in the middle, the tap would deliver half whatever the voltage drop is. These taps are not necessarily in the middle. And this is not, it, 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 to, to get 6 volts here, if it's dead center like it shows it pictorially, then you need 12 across here. But that is, this isn't 12, this is 35. 35 volts across this heater. So where do you get 6? So the tap is not in the middle. The tap is off to one side, allowing for a 6 volt tap off to run the light bulb. Uh, it hook, hook this light up to the wrong side, I think you're going to have the opposite on it. 35 minus 6, you'd have uh, 30, almost 30 volts on it, I think. So that's the deal with these lights. Now pe people will say things like uh, the light is important for saving the filament, or if the light's burned out, the 
filament's gonna, gonna won't last as long, and some of that may be true, but the primary thing that's going on here is it's a sneaky way to get six volts to a light bulb. That's the real objective of having this. So we have a radio like this and the light is burned out. Some people will say on startup, uh, this filament's gonna take an unnecessary beating. Maybe that's true, I'm not exactly sure. Probably better to make sure these lights are in and working all the time and working the way the, the designers of this equipment meant it to work. Hey, what's this? Oh, that's up on the clock. Huh? Is there a light in the clock? Is there a light in the clock? So I'm looking. I don't think so. There might be a light in there. It looks more. It doesn't look like a light. It looks like a switch. So. I'm not sure what they're talking about. E4 and E3. Sure looks like a light, doesn't it? Off the clock motor. A light off the clock motor. Is it some little indication light or something? I don't know. Okay, don't know what's going on with this. We'll have to look at that a little closer maybe. I don't see any light bulb or anything. Interesting. So that's basically a tour through the radio here in the important or interesting things about this radio is that it has an additional front end on it. Sometimes this is called the uh, pre-selector. This can be called a pre-selector. And the other interesting thing about this radio is it has a volume control in this tube, which is not, I've never seen it before. And that's why I've never seen this tube before, which incidentally I do not have any replacement for. I haven't muttered about that already. Now let's just take a look down here. Is there some secret information hidden away here? So there's, so so these numbers would be the order in which you would approach the, the alignment. So this would be you adjust this one first, this one second. Where's number three, four, where's five? There's five. RF R, RF trimmer, antenna trimmer. That's seven. Seven, maybe that was it. Seven steps. This is listing all the different parts. L1, E4, E, E4, E5. So, so E5 is this terminal on the back. What's E4? E4 is. Um. There is no E4. No e E4. Um, this kind of looks like a light bulb here, doesn't it? But the only thing that's up here is uh, the plug. No, that's here. That's here. E4. Wait a minute. That's the clock. Guess what? I see a light. Okay, I'll flip back to the cameras here. We'll, we'll take a look at some of these things. So I discovered there's another light in here. E1 pointing at the speaker, so E must mean uh, accessory or something. Maybe maybe that's what it is. Accessory, the speaker being an accessory, it'd be an A. Anyway, if you can spell. Okay, enough looking at this. Now, just for interest's sake, we just roll up a little further up and find another radio in here. Let me just shrink this a wee bit. So this is the 57C. The radio I've got in front of me is called the 67C. The 57C has one less tube. It doesn't have this front end tube. So the antenna, like in many, many radios, feeds straight to the mixer tube. The rest of this is essentially identical to the radio that I'm working on, including the, the 12 CR6 tube here, and how the grid is handled. The grid, the grid, whoops. The grid has APC voltage applied to it, so it's the same sort of thing. Ooh, E1. Okay. Ooh. So, ooh. I hope this isn't in my radio. This almost certainly is a very early integrated circuit. You can call it that. On, it's not. It's not a chip or a wafer of uh, silicon. It's actual parts, as far as I know, shoved into a little package. Package, I think, is the right word for it. One of these in your radio, uh, boy, you can have a lot of trouble trying to trying to deal with it. 
There's some notes down here. A 390, 10% half watt Allen Brady type resistor. Allen Brady. So I've certainly heard the name Allen Brady. I, I thought it was related to a type of oscillator or something. An Allen Brady type resistor, R9, has been added. Oh, to the CR6 tube. This resistor is wired across the filament to stabilize filament voltage during warm up. Well, that's pretty interesting. So can we see that? So here, here's the CR. No, there's no component shown here. Up here, they don't do much with the heater on the schematic. So other than that note, now I wonder what's going on in mine. I didn't see this note. This look at the print on this note is different too. So what's happened is they've come along after putting these out on the market and discovered the uh, 12 CR6s were blowing up or failing early and they've gone and done this uh, change, I believe, I believe, I believe. Oh, it's a totally different board here, right? Look at that. It's not point-to-point -point wiring like it is in this radio. Can we see that? Uh, that component, I, no, we can't see it in here. It's not really visible. Somewhere in here is that little package of parts, though. Oh, there's a little bit of instruction on how to do the alignment, which is lacking from my schematic, but on this one, you know, it's missing the front end part. So I'm not sure this would be terribly helpful. So uh, a lot of the alignment too, uh, I was connecting my signal generator right up over here. That's probably a mistake. I should probably use a loop and broadcast literally onto the antenna of the radio to do uh, to do the alignment work in that. So what do we get out of this? We get out of this. Why is a radio quiet? Number one probable reason is weak tube. Number two reason is weak signal reaching this tube, weak audio. What could it be from? Well, oh, oh, quite a number of things. You know, these resistors going way high. They have to go way, way high though. Um, weak output on the diode here. Um, this resistor's gone high. Um, this capacitor is not passing any uh, signal anymore. Uh, it's gone weak. Um, the ABC voltage doesn't seem to be developing. So if we think about that problem, then we would be right back here that the, either the signal reaching this diode is weak or the diode's the rectification is weak because of why? Because it may be, may be very unlikely these capacitors are uh, leaky, really leaky. It's very, very, very unlikely. This uh, little switch here is uh, high resistance. It's not actually closed properly. This is just looks just like it looks. It's two pieces of metal sprung together, just like that. Looks just like that. How, how can we figure out where the weakness is? So we could we can trace the signal through the radio, uh, watching it at every step. The probably most important to go here. Uh, listen to the IF signal at 455. Hear it on the grid it on the output of my signal tracer and see if it isn't much louder. Um, I can like fool around here but it's hard to know if what we're detecting or testing or hearing or measuring is wrong. That's the problem here. So uh, but we can poke around a little bit and see like for instance we can he should be able to hear the audio here with the signal tracer and we should be able to hear it here and it shouldn't be that much different if the volume is turned up uh, that kind of thing so we can poke around yeah so signal tracing may highlight where the signal is getting weak particularly if we look on the output here and there's a ton and but there's nothing getting the speaker maybe it's this guy even though he tests good what could be wrong with him Tested good in the uh, in the uh, tube tester, so I don't think there's anything wrong with this tube. Maybe this resistor. Maybe the bias is not correct. I also noticed on loud signals there was definitely what I definitely what I heard is maybe the sound of cutoff, the sound of the tube being driven into cutoff from a high signal. Well, that suggests a biasing problem too. Lots of things we can look for 
can't just throw the hat in because this tube's weak and the radio will never be loud again. Then it's too early to throw in the hat. Um, so I think it's all about signal tracing uh, to start with. And we'll just get a better feel uh, for how the radio's working. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave this video there. So it's just just about the schematic and what we can derive from it. And in the next video, I'll start doing some of these tests, poke around and see if we can't find some component or some reason other than this tube causing the, the lower output. Good. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, see you on the next video.